Hi, so welcome to SUSACON, and this is the demo 1335 for, TUT, for session TUT 1133. This is the App Armor Securing Your Servers with App Armor demo. Um, so, hopefully, you got a chance to go see my um, presentation session. Um, great one to take a look at before viewing this, just to kind of know what you're looking at, get an idea of what we're going to be doing and what we're talking about. But regardless, let's dive in. So I've got a SLES 15 SP3 server installed. And um, if you were looking at the presentation that I did earlier, you know that there is a requirement to do a, a pattern install of App Armor to really get all your utilities and everything working. So on the left-hand side, I'm in the Etsy App Armor D directory. You know that that's the directory where profiles are stored by default. So if I just do a listing here in that directory, you'll see a whole bunch of things in here. And this directory will be practically empty if you don't install that pattern. So if you come to this directory and it's empty, or there's only one or two, three files in here, maybe a directory or two, then you know you need to install the App Armor pattern. But once installed, you'll have directories um, like the Tunables directory, which has some libraries in it. And below here, these are all profiles that are defined. And there's a couple other profiles up here that are listed. Um, but notice the, pro notice the names of the files, user.bin.lessopen.sh. That translates to a file called slash user slash bin slash less open dot sh. So remember, as we mentioned in the in the presentation, the slashes in the full path of the file name are replaced with dots as we list the profiles that represent them. So this is where the profiles will be listed when um, they're either downloaded customized and created locally, you know, what have you. I also mentioned that when you first get logged on and you first get your system up and running, the AA status command is sort of your friend for trying to get the lay of the land as far as profiles go. So if I run that, it'll tell you that there are 50 profiles loaded and 50 are in enforce mode, right? You know that that means they are in effect and acting against and will um, impose restrictions on anything that's listed below. Now, I also mentioned that just because I have these loaded doesn't mean that I'm running them, it just means that the profile is there. But you'll notice at the bottom, it says that there are zero profiles in complain mode, okay? And that one process has a profile defined that we're running, and there's one process in enforce mode and here is that process. So you can see up above, here's the process that's running. And then that there is one profile in enforce mode for that process. There's zero processes in complaint mode. So there's a difference in a profile versus process. Um, and then that there are zero processes that are unconfined, but have a profile defined. So kind of tells you a little bit about the state of the union as far as App Armor goes in protecting your applications that are running. So I have, um, in my root directory, I have a, a, a file that I've created. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a script. But I thought, you know, I don't want to make this too complicated and hard to demonstrate. So this is a simple file that will execute certain functions, um, file functions, network functions, you know, just like your application might do. So if we were to run a less on this, you'll see that I've got a very simple script. I've kind of documented it um, pretty heavily, but I set some values so that I can change colors of prompts and things like that. But basically this script, when you run it, is going to do an app armor test script and if i come down here um, it's going to try to create a file and it's going to try to create it using the touch command so very simple but if i am successful 
then it'll tell me I'm successful. And if I'm not, it'll tell me I'm unsuccessful. And notice I'm trying to create it in a subdirectory called data. And there's a file called testfile.txt. So very simple, but I should be able to do that. You'll notice, well, over here, my other window, I'm logged in running as root because it's, I got the red coloring here. Um, and you can see that I'm running as root, but, um, Root should be able to do anything, right? If I'm root, I should be able to create this file. If I've created the file, I should also be able to test the deletion of it. So I try to remove that exact file. And then it shows me whether I'm able to remove it or not. Then it will try to test to do a wget. So I'm going to do some network function. I'm going to try to download a file from GitHub called apparmor.txt. And I'm going to put that in the data directory. And if I'm successful, then it gives me a download a successfully um, command. And I will try to delete that right away. And it'll tell me that it's deleted. So it cleans itself up. Otherwise, it tells me in red that the file download is blocked by AppArmor. <clears throat> so very simple file, but does the job in terms of getting a very simple test done. So if I, it doesn't matter, I'll pick either side. So if I run my AA test script, it says, okay, you're logged in as root. Let's see if I can create a file. Okay, it was created successfully. Now let's see if I can remove that file. So I've removed it successfully. So my, my discretionary access controls are allowing me to create and delete. And it tries to download, tries to issue an HTTP command. It brings down the file. It was able to download it, saving to apparmor.txt. And then it tried to delete it and everything was successful. So from a discretionary access control, I am able to do anything and everything that my script was allowing or executing, I should say. But if I wanted to, to run App Armor to, to ensure that that script is never modified and runs as it is, then I run the AA Genprof command and I give it the path, though it will determine it all on its own if I don't. Um, so there's the full path to the file, and there is the AA genprof command. So I'll run this utility, and it will capture some information, and it'll say, okay, I've, um, I'm updating this profile. I'm setting this profile into complain mode, so I'm going to be tracking all the changes that I'm doing, and then later on go in and capture that. Um, so it tells me... To now, so it's profiling my script. It says, please start the application to be profiled in another window and exercise its functionality now. And then once completed, come back and hit S for scan. And let's go capture all the details. Let's go create a profile for it. So let's go run that script one more time. It's going to run and execute successfully as it should because I haven't enforced anything and I'm just leveraging standard discretionary access control functions to determine if I'm allowed to create files and delete files and download files. So that's all worked fine. Now I come over here and say, okay, let's scan and let's capture and record all the things that that thing did that the system captured. And I've got a couple options here and I don't wanna delve into this and make this too long of a demo, but it tells me the profile and it tells me what, what it's trying to execute, whatever the script was doing. It was doing a T put severity. It's generated as a, or estimated as a level three. And what do I want to do? Do I want to inherit that? Do I want to deny it? Do I want to abort? So I'm going to say, let's allow this. And so I for inherit is the allow. There's that sleep command that pauses between each one of my commands. So let's inherit that one. There's the touch command that I use to, create the, or touch the file to create with it. So let's inherit that one. There's the remove file. So I'm going to inherit that. There's the wget. And then it switches 
and it says, okay, so now I've got some other things. I noticed that you're, you're, you need to access the TTY on the console. So, um, because my script displays things on the console. So do I want to allow or deny or ignore and all these kinds of things? So I'm going to, and it, and it gives me an option. Notice that I've high, it's highlighted one for me. If I hit the down arrow, I can go to two and I can select, but it chooses the default for me, which is more general, or I can be very specific and say, uh, allow read and write to the TTY. So I'm going to allow it to do its job because it selected one for me. So I'm going to hit allow because it's said that that was the, the appropriate default. Then the next one is what about this, um, this test file? I'm trying to set the path um, on the, on the owner value of it. Should I allow that? So I'm going to do that. And I'm giving the owner write privileges and read privileges. So I'm going to allow that. And now it's gone. It recognizes that wget command. And do I want to allow that to happen, that, that network function? And so I'm going to allow each one of these. And I'm going to let it select by default. Now, notice this one is not giving me a couple of choices, like this one and that one. And this one only gave me one. But the one above here gave me one and two. Sometimes you'll get three and four. <clears throat> the idea is it'll pick what it thinks is the best choice, but you can obviously override it. So I'm going to allow, set, here's a one with a two, and it selected the one above it for me. So I'm going to hit allow for each of these because it's. I'm saying these are all the things that are appropriate for this application, in my case, a script, to do. And now that it's done, it says, okay, now do you want to save your changes or do you want to view them or would you like to abort? So I'm going to hit S for save. And it has built my profile for me. So I... Don't anticipate needing to do anything else. I'm just going to hit finish. And it generated the profile for slash root slash AA test. So if I go in and take a look at slash Etsy, fbomber.d, I should see an entry for that profile. But remember, in the previous examples, I should be replacing the slashes with dots in the full path to the file. So somewhere in here. I, oh, there it is, slash, there's the dot root, or not dot root, root dot AA test dot SH. So there's my file, full path to it, slashes substituted with, um, with dot. So there's my profile. And if I look at it, Very simple. It's all the things that it walked me through in the wizard. And I could come in here and edit and modify these if I wanted. But now I've got a profile running. It's in enforce mode. Notice up here, way at the top, it's every time you run this, it reloads all the profiles. When you run run many of these utilities, it'll rerun the, uh, the profile listing. And there is my profile running in enforce mode. So now if I come over here and rerun my, my script, well, since I'm not doing anything out of, the, out of the ordinary, it should run just fine. It's, it's successfully writing files, deleting files, and then it should successfully, because I haven't changed anything, download and execute that, um, that copy from the internet. So now let's say we edit that file as if it's been hacked by some kind of hacker. And um, we're not going to try to edit or touch a file in the root directory's data directory. We're going to try to touch a file in, um, you know, let's say the, let's say the root directory's um, in the home directory slash um, I'm uh, hacker.txt. So it's trying to create a file that's different than what I had done before in a completely different directory. And um, I'm going, as I do this, I'm going to delete these exits, which normally would end 
um, the script, I'm going to say, don't end. I want to execute and just test a whole bunch of other things. Let's not exit if I blocked, which it should be. So let's let's edit uh, exit there, change that one. Now it's going to delete a file, and um, let's see if we can remove a file. And you know what? It doesn't have to be the exact same one. Let's say try to remove slash. <laughs> remove the host file, right? Let's delete something that's important. Um, it's not what was in the profile, so we're anticipating that this would be blocked. Again, there's the exit command. I don't want to do that. Um, and then um, let's down here, let's go ahead and, and, and remove the exit while we're at it. And we're going to try to download that file, but let's let's try to download it to um, a different directory. Let's try to put it in. And again, I should be able to do anything. I'm root, right? I should be able to put this in slash user bin. I should be able to put that there, and then. If I put it there, should I be able to remove it? Well, if I can't put it, it's probably not going to let me to remove it anyway. But for argument's sake, let's try to remove slash USR slash bin slash apparmor.txt. So let's say that this one allowed it for some reason, which it shouldn't. Could I remove it? from user bin if it were even to allow it to come down in the first place. Um, and I got rid of the things, the exits. So let's save this. And now we won't change anything. So we've been, we've been hacked, for example. And I'm logged in as root. So I, there's nothing that I should be blocked from doing. But let's see what AppArmor does. So let's see if I can create my file. Oops. It won't allow it, permissions denied. I have rights from a discretionary but not mandatory access control. It also did not allow me to remove Etsy host, and I'm thankful for that because that could certainly ruin things for me. And it wouldn't allow me to download the file, so it was blocked by AppArmor. So um, therefore, everything is as I would have expected. AppArmor has blocked even though I'm logged in as root, the ability for a hacker to come in, leverage the impersonation of my script and the rights that it had, and perform operations. So, um, oh, the, the other thing that I wanted to show you, our, our lovely PS command. Remember, if I add the capital Z on the end, um, that will, and I should have done this earlier when I was just kind of walking and showing you around things. There's my PS command. When I run that, it shows me, remember the AA status told me that there was one process running in enforce mode, and there it is, my NSCD process running. But it shows me all of my processes and all of them running unconfined except for that one. Anyway, um, thanks for seeing this demo. I appreciate it. Um, Look, if you've got any questions or whatever, um, my email address is bsix at susa.com. Feel free to email me. The um, In my presentation session, I made that available on the um, speaker slide. So didn't have that for the demo. Sorry about that. But b6, six, like the number, at susa.com. And um, that's it. Look forward to seeing you out there on the net.